Hey, I'm Coach Colin Castell with Shot Mechanics Basketball, and today you're going to learn how to shoot the ball just like Stephen Curry. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is Stephen Curry's feet when he shoots the ball. Now, your feet are really important because they're kind of the base and the foundation of your jump shot, and that's where everything starts on the way up through. So the first thing I want to talk about is the turn. Now, a lot of coaches will tell you that you need to square up to the basket when you shoot the ball, meaning that all 10 toes are going to face the rim. The problem with this is it has a ton of, it makes for your shoulders to have a ton of tension. So when you go to release the ball above your head, it makes it really, really difficult to have that smooth one motion release uh, that guys like Steph Curry have. So what I suggest you do, and what Steph Curry does, is you tilt your feet just slightly off to the side. So if you're looking at the three point line here, you can tell my right foot is closer to it than my left foot. And just having this slight tilt in your, your feet, make it so as you bring the ball up, you're shooting hip, elbow, shoulder, and all are aligned with the basket. Um, that's gonna help you shoot the ball straighter and eliminate a lot of left to right misses. Um, I've seen players that have been square shooters their entire life and increase their shooting percentage maybe 10 to 12% just by turning their feet immediately. Um, so it's something that's really, really important and something that you probably wanna try. So take a video of your jump shot, see what you got going on, and then kind of assess. You know, you wanna make sure that you're not turned too far or too uh, little. You know, so some people like a small turn, some people like a bigger turn, but where you wanna be careful of is that you're not turning too much. I've seen players kind of start getting carried away and they start turning at 90 degrees, and then that makes it pretty hard to get all that power and momentum into the basketball as well. So generally, you're gonna to wanna to turn your feet somewhere between, like if there was a clock on the ground, somewhere between like 11 and 10.30, somewhere in there. Um, but each player is just a little bit different. So think about turning your feet just a little bit, just like Stephen Curry, and it's gonna help unlock all that power in your shoulders. It's gonna make it a lot easier to shoot with range and consistency. All right, so the next thing that you wanna think about on your footwork, much like Stephen Curry, is having your heels up at all times when you're getting ready to shoot the basketball. Ball. A major mistake that a lot of players make is when they catch the ball or they're uh, going into it off of a pull-up is that they plant their heels into the ground as they're stepping into it. Now the issue with this is as you plant your heels, it sucks all your energy and momentum into the ground and it makes it that much harder to regather it um, so it slows your jumper down a ton, you lose a lot of range and you lose a lot of quickness. Um, so one thing you can do is you can make sure that you're always on the balls of your feet and your heels off the ground, just like this. So you can tell that if I'm on the balls of my feet, my heels kind of act as a natural springboard and allow my ankles, knees and hips to all work together to get that quick pop into the jump sh shot. So the ball makes it all the way to the basket really easy, really smoothly. So a great way to think about it is like a diving board. I always like to think about it like a diving board. If you're trying to jump off of a diving board, you don't run, plant your heels into it, and then try to spring off. You stay on your toes, right? And a jump shot's pretty much the same thing. As you're catching the ball and you're getting ready to go into your shot, you're just springing off of the toes and you have very little contact time with the ground and you're using all three of those joints together to get the spring of the jump shot. So try to stay on your toes and if you keep your heels off the ground, it's gonna help you out a ton. All right, so the next thing that's really important on Steph Curry's shot is that he has a one motion jumper. And basically that just means as he's getting ready to shoot, the ball goes up in a one motion manner and never pauses or never hitches. So a problem that a lot of players have is when they get ready to shoot, they bring the ball up and it breaks the plane of their forehead. So you can pretend like if you drew a straight line up on your forehead, if the ball breaks that plane, that means it's going backwards and then it has to come forwards, making it a two motion shot. Now the issue with this is many times that makes it so it has a poor arc on the shot. So if you bring it back, it kind of turns into more of a catapult where it comes forward. Where guys like Steph Curry keep it all smooth in one motion going up, that way he gets that optimal arc, so mathematically he's gonna hit more shots. So really kind of the way that I like to tell if you have a one motion or two motion is just by the plane of your forehead there. So what I would do is I'd film yourself shooting, check it out, and see if at any point during your shot, if the ball comes behind that plane of your forehead. If it breaks that plane, odds are you've got a two motion shot and it's probably limiting your range um, and limiting your shooting percentage as well. So try to make sure it's one motion. Um, you know, one thing to think about with the one motion is, you know, a lot of younger kids especially try to shoot the ball from the chest right here and it's good and smooth in one motion. And then as they get older, they try to move it by the forehead and that's where they need that extra power and it comes off. So just make sure that when you're doing your one motion, if you're trying to move your set point up, I like to think about putting my eye or my finger on my eyebrow right here. If I can get my finger up on my eyebrow, it's gonna stay in front of my forehead, keeping that smooth one motion all the way to the basket. All right, so next let's talk about Steph Curry's shot line. And the shot line is basically just the path that the ball takes on its way from the catch all the way through the release. Now what a lot of players do is they kind of, they start their shot line wherever they catch the ball at. But something that Steph's really good at is he keeps his shot line super consistent by always bringing the ball to his shot line instead of adjusting his shot line where he catches the ball. So what I mean by that is this. So let's say a pass comes and it's out here. It's high and to the right. 
His shot lines always right up the right side of his body through his eyebrow into the basket. So instead of catching and bringing his right hand over and pulling the ball with his right hand and going into his shot, instead what he does is he takes his left hand on the catch, shoves the ball over into his shot line, and then goes up with it from there. That way, this is always staying the exact same, and really the only kind of changing variables is just getting the ball there. Um, so he's really, really great at bringing the ball over to his right hand instead of having his right hand go and get it. So think about on his pull-ups, right? He's really good at hitting that um, left, left-handed dribble kind of hesitation pull-up. And the reason why is because a lot of guys, they do their left-handed dribble, they bring their right hand over to catch the ball like this, and then they try to go up and everything's out of alignment. But instead, if you watch him when he goes into his pull-up, he shoots the ball over with his left into his right hand. That way, everything's all perfectly aligned to the basket. So always think about instead of having your dominant hand come get the ball on a bad pass, try to bring the ball to your dominant hand as it's already set and ready to go. That'll make your jumper faster, it'll make it smoother, and it'll make it much more consistent. All right, so we touched on it a little bit before, but Steph Curry has a perfect eyebrow set point. Um, a lot of great shooters shoot like this, like guys like him, uh, you know, sometimes Clay Thompson, uh, Damian Lillard. And basically, it's just the idea is as you bring the ball up, the time that it starts moving towards the basket on your release is right when your fingers get to your eyebrow, right about here. So if you look at Steph Curry, when he, when he brings the ball up, most of the time he just kind of sets the ball right up on the top of his forehead right here, and then begins his release up towards the basket. Now this is great because a lot of young players, like I mentioned before, like to shoot from down here on their chest. And this works when they're younger, but the older you get, this to this makes a huge difference to having the defender be able to get a hand on the ball, block the ball, um, swat it. So what you wanna do is you wanna begin to bring it up, but make sure that it doesn't go any higher than your um, fingers right on your eyebrows right here. Because if you do, if you start bringing it up, your elbow's gonna go towards the basket and it's gonna turn into that two motion shot we talked about earlier. Um, so really, I always just like to think, to take my pointer finger, put it right on my forehead, and that's where I wanna bring the ball up to, and then forward on my release. So if you can get that um, set point up by your eyebrow, it's gonna help a ton for arc, it's gonna help a ton for smoothness, um, and you're gonna be able to hit more shots because of it. All right, so now let's talk about Steph Curry's release. Now Steph is what we call a middle finger uh, shooter, meaning that his middle finger is the last finger to touch the ball, and it finishes down towards the ground. Now there's a couple keys to think about when you're, when you're shooting with your middle finger. Number one, you want your middle finger directly in the center of the ball. If on that release, if your middle finger is off to the side, it's gonna cause everything to be out of alignment and you're probably gonna miss to the left or to the right. So it's really imperative that on your release you make sure that your middle finger is in the center of the ball, that way everything flies straight. Now the next thing you can do to get this middle finger release is what I call a palm rotation. And this is something that a lot of middle finger shooters do because to get your fingers in the, or your middle finger in the center of the ball, it's kinda hard on your wrist. You get a lot of wrist tension back there. So a palm rotation is just the idea that as you bring the ball up, your shooting hand's gonna stay on the outside of the ball, and as you bring it up to your set point, you're gonna start to rotate it around so it's behind. So as you bring the ball up, it's on the side, rotate it around to where it's on the back, and then follow through with your palm down towards the ground. Now a lot of coaches will tell you that this is bad because there's extra motion, but really it's pretty repeatable and it's pretty simple to do. And it's something that a lot of middle finger shooters, guys like Steph Curry and myself do when you're shooting a basketball. So again, keys here, you want your middle finger in the center of the basketball, and you wanna use that palm rotation to rotate the ball around as it comes up to your set point, and then snap your wrist through the follow through. All right, so next let's talk about Steph's guide hand. Now a lot of coaches will tell you that on your release, as the ball comes up, you want your guide hand facing straight towards the ceiling. And this works for some players, but for some players it works better if you point it towards your target a little bit. So guys like Steph Curry and James Harden, they're really good at when they have this guide hand come up, they keep it on the ball for um, enough time, and then as it comes out, they're gonna rotate their guide hand forward so their fingers are facing towards the basket and their thumbs straight up in the air. Now where this gets to be a little bit of an issue is if your palm starts rotating because you're pushing with your thumb and so it's pointing down. So this is no, you don't want both palms facing towards the ground. But if you can bring the ball up and then flex your wrist forward, pointing towards the basket, it's gonna help guide the ball longer and it's gonna keep it straighter. Um, Cause what a lot of athletes do is they have the issue of they bring it up, their guide hand's great, and then it gets really tense right here with the wrist, and so they just drop it off too early. And a lot of, a lot of you know, misses can come in that last little bit of your release. So if you can keep that guide hand straight with it, and then flop it over just like your wrist, 
it's gonna help you out quite a bit to stable that ball for those last crucial seconds of flight. All right, so another issue that a lot of players have is the extension of their arm on the fall through. And this is something that Steph is awesome at. So when you release the ball, you wanna make sure that your arm is completely straight on the release. If it's bent at all, it makes it really hard to repeat that exact same spot every time, so it takes a lot longer to develop your muscle memory um, over time. So if you notice when Steph shoots, every time he releases the ball, he locks that arm out, gets a nice snap of the wrist, and therefore it's a lot easier for him to repeat. He's not having to try to find that exact same little bend each time. Um, so what I would highly recommend, film yourself shooting, and if you finish with any sort of bend in your arm, I would work on straightening it out because number one, you're gonna get better snaps, you're gonna get better uh, range and release, and number two, it's gonna be much more consistent over time. You're gonna be able to build up muscle memory a lot faster, so you're gonna be a better shooter a lot quicker. Um, so think about that on your release, Lock that arm straight out, and if you do that, you'll be pretty consistent. All right, so now I wanna make sure that we solidify these shooting mechanics. Um, so I've got some great drills for you that if you do these over time, will help you shoot a lot like Steph Curry. So the first one we're gonna do is what I like to call bounce ups. So you're gonna go to whatever range is comfortable. It might be 15 feet, it might be the three point line. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna bounce the ball above your head. It's gotta go above your head, okay? Cause I want you to react here. So you're gonna bounce the ball above your head and you're gonna do a two footed hop into your jumper. Now what we're thinking about here are two main things. Number one, powering off the balls of our feet like we talked about earlier. And number two, adding a little bit of a dip for rhythm. So what I don't want you to do, I don't want you to bounce the ball up, catch it at your chest, and go up from your chest. I want you to bounce it up, catch high, bring it down to your waist, and then back up because that's gonna be much more fluid than if you just catch and go straight up. Um, the other thing we wanna think about, like I mentioned, is staying on the balls of your feet. Remember the diving board analogy I gave you earlier, right? As you spin the ball yourself going into this drill, you're going to power off the balls of your feet with very little contact time. Again, pretend and picture like you're bouncing off of a diving board trying to get as much spring as you possibly can. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna move around the three point line, spin the ball to yourself, powering up after you bounce the ball above your head, just like this. Bam, ball goes up, dip, shot goes up. All right, so the next drill we're gonna to use to develop this smooth one motion jumper. Um, so you're gonna to get to somewhere in the 15 foot range, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna set the ball on the ground, and it's gonna be outside of your dominant foot. So I'm right-handed, so the ball's gonna be on the outside of my right foot, just like this. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna come, step in, grab the ball off the ground, and you're gonna shoot it towards the hoop in one fluid motion. So I'm picking it up and shooting it towards the hoop. So the idea here is that we're kind of forcing ourselves to not shoot a two motion jumper because it's really hard to pick the ball up, cock it back and then throw it forward and keep it smooth, right? So what I want you to think about is picking the ball up and then shooting in one fluid smooth motion towards the basket. This will help you get kind of that one motion down and kind of eliminate your two motion stroke. All right, so the next drill, we're gonna work on that pickup that Steph Curry does to keep that perfect shot line. Um, so these are just transition three. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna start with the ball at the dribble outside the three point line with your inside hand. So wherever you're at on the court, you're gonna start with the ball on your inside hand. And as you drive towards the three point line and you're getting ready to shoot, we're gonna think about having our heels off of the ground and we're working on that pullover to our dominant hand on the shot. So if we're on the right side of the floor, since we've got our inside hand and I'm right handed, I'm pulling it over to my right hip and then going into my jumper just like that. By pulling it over and going up, we work on that perfect repeatable shot line. Now it's gonna change a little bit if you're gonna pull up with your right hand. So if I'm on this side of the court and I'm dribbling up with my inside hand, I don't need to pull it over to my opposite hip, right? Because if I pull it over here, now I got a funky shot line. So instead, all I'm doing is I'm pulling up and I'm thinking about brushing my elbow on my hip bone, just like this. Because if I can pull it over and brush my elbow on my hip bone, that means that everything's gonna be in that same perfect alignment every single time. So for this drill, you're just gonna move around the three-point line. Remember, keeping the ball on your inside hand and adjusting those mechanics depending on what side you're on. All right, so the last drill we're gonna do is 183s. And basically, this is just where you're starting with your back facing to the basket. You're gonna spin the ball yourself, and on the hop catch, you're gonna hop again 180 and fire up a jumper. So the keys here that we're working on is number one, targeting, right? Stephen Curry is really good at targeting the hoop. So as soon as you're coming out of that hop, I want your eyes up on the rim as soon as you possibly can, locating and aiming. Um, the other thing we're working on is just like the footwork before, springing off the balls of your heat, feet. Each time you jump, I don't want your heels coming out on the ground, I want you staying light on the balls of your feet, springing into it as quick as you can. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna work around the three-point arc, and you're gonna switch which way you hop each time. So the first shot I take, I'm gonna spin the ball, and then hop this direction. The next time I'm gonna spin the ball, hop the opposite direction. That way you get used to shooting off both directions. And this is great in-game application. Because if I'm coming off of a cut and I'm catching a ball like this, 
it's pretty much the same movement, right? I'm still targeting the hoop, I'm still hopping off of the feet. Same thing, coming this way, off of the catch. Still pretty much the same movement. And this drill actually is a little bit harder, so it's gonna make it easier to hit shots in game. All right, if you like this video, go ahead and pound that like button down below, and then leave a comment in the comment section down below that, and let me know what sort of video you wanna see next. This is a channel for the people, by the people, and I run pretty much everything off a request, so leave it down there, and hopefully I'll get to it. And if you're new to shot mechanics, welcome, and you're gonna to wanna to do two things. Number one, hit that subscription button below, because we put out a ton of videos every week, and they're all gonna get you better, I guarantee it. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click this button up here, or the link in the description to get a free copy of my number one scoring workout. This scoring workout is gonna increase your scoring average probably the very first few times you use it, and it's one of the workouts that I use with all of my athletes. So you definitely wanna check that out, and it's free. Um, again, I'm Coach Colin Castell with Shot Mechanics Basketball. Thanks for watching, and until next time, splash on.